Hello and welcome to the program Faith in Action, a platform where we take a look at the interrelationship between our faith and our action. Our faith is the overriding belief in the supremacy of the divine providence, while the work we do is what we do on this planet Earth to enhance our living or impact on the life of the people with us in this society. I am Emeka Obieki. In the segments of this program, we have a lot of things that talked about faith and work and how they interface, the kind of synergy that exists for them to work very well in the society. On the first segment of the program that you're going to watch right now is the activities of the Ladies Auxiliary, Knights of St. John International, Abuja Commandry. You are going to see the extent they have taken their charity work to. In this year's Mother's Day celebration, the Ladies Auxiliary of the Knights of St. John International, Abuja Commandry, showed their motherly love and care by sharing assorted food items to various orphanages, including the Parish Health Center on HIV AIDS. The event took place at Our Lady Queen of Nigeria Pro Cathedral, Garuki Abuja, on the 19th of April 2015. The President and her team also visited the internally displaced persons camp at Durumi Abuja. The grand respected president, noble sister Georgina Onyezilibu, explained the reasons behind their action. Today is uh, a day we are doing our grand charity. In the Ladies' Night of St. John, it is one of our pillar duties to be charitable. And we do this every year to the less privileged, to the motherless babies' homes, and any group that is in need of help, we also render our own contributions in order to identify with such group. The Secretary of the Ladies Auxiliary, Lady Juliana Oyaide, also had this to say. So for this year's charity work, fortunately it's falling into Mother's Day celebration, which is today, and we are reaching out to the less privileged, the orphanage destitutes. So for today, you can see a lot of sisters here present. They are representatives of all the auxiliaries in Abuja ground, 16 of them. So these items are shared among them to bring so that we can now distribute. The coordinators of the various homes were at the church premises to receive their gift items. They are Reverend Sister Mary Lucy Mbamara, the coordinator of Home for Orphans and Vulnerable Children Buari, Reverend Sister Josephine Wogugu, the coordinator of St. Mary's Home for Orphan and Destitute Guagualada, and Madam Priscilla Nwokena, the coordinator of Parish Action Committee on HIV AIDS. The beneficiaries of these good gestures also express their appreciation. I'm happy. Hey, I'm very happy because this particular group, they have been, even they visited us in Easter. They, they were one of the group that uh, supported us during the Easter period and uh, had a wonderful Easter for our clients. Now, I was surprised when they called again. Easter is just two weeks ago or something. The uh, women wing called us again. So in fact, they are our regular supporters. I'm so happy and I'm grateful to the auxiliary, the ladies of St. John, mm, for this wonderful generosity. Uh, today is Mother's Sunday and at the same time we are celebrating the mothers. And the mothers are actually showing the children how 
they are, what they are and who they are to children. So they have donated generously to the children of uh, the orphanages here. Well, we feel very grateful to the ninth ladies of St. John for extending their generosity to our home. Our home is called Holy Family Stars of the Nindi, home for orphans and vulnerable children, Buari, Abuja. At the internally displaced persons camp, both young and old came out to welcome the mothers. The presence of the security men enhanced the smooth distribution of food items. The secretary of the camp and the women leader also expressed their gratitude. What happened to us is that Boko Haram drove us from our homes and we ran to Abuja. We have been sleeping in Bacha. We left with nothing. We want to say thank you to those who have been helping us, including you, the media. We appreciate those who have been assisting us. We say thank you. I pray that God will reward you abundantly. May he open more doors of blessings for you. Sincerely, we say thank you. There is nothing like government presence here. It's only, it is only Nema come once from the beginning. When Nema come, and they have already gone. We are always praying to see people say like you. Maybe you can take emotion about leaving this area. Maybe you government will have a place for us. Or the non-governmental organization, churches, maybe those who are paying visit to us will have a place for us. Indeed, it was a show of love. Well, exemplary, I must say, that was a serious work of faith. I hope you had a pleasant time watching that. And some other organizations like that can also emulate this gesture, especially extending your hand of fellowship to the less privileged. The next on the line is Lavon Seletao with our guests. On my faith and I this morning, I'm speaking with His Excellency Dr. Matthias Oko of Obache, a gynecologist, a former deputy governor of all cross River state. Good morning, Your Excellency. Can we meet you, sir? My name is... Dr. Chief Dr. Matthias Oko of Oboche. I am an officer of the Order of the Niger. I was born uh, 30 December 1936 in Ugaga, in Yala Cross River State. I attended primary school, Roman Catholic primary schools. Uh, in Okboma, in Ogboja, and finished up in uh, St. Benedict's Catholic Church, a Catholic school in Ogoja. I came out first in the examination, in the primary school examination, out of 72, 1951. And uh, because there was no secondary school nearby, I had to spend that one year in Obudu. Now, in the first quarter of my uh, period in SPC, Calabar, my mother died. And I found out later, my mother died 
of very uh, with very severe pains. He died a very painful death. And <clears throat> I later found out that she died of cancer of the cervix. Now that is important because it influenced the rest of my desire to become a gynecologist. And, um, so I then I then made up my mind to do obstetrician and gynecology after qualifying as a medical doctor. Your Excellency, how did you come about your Catholic faith? I was baptized into the Catholic faith. First of all, you know, in Africa, in Nigeria, we adopted the faith, the faith of the missionaries who first appeared in that in that in that scene, in that society. You will find that when Methodists first appeared, most of the population in that area are Methodists. Where Anglicans first appeared, most of the population in that area are Anglicans. Now the missionaries, the, the white missionaries who first came to Goja, were Roman Catholics, St. Patrick's Missionary Society. So the school I attended was founded by the missionary, uh, Catholic missionaries. Therefore, I became a Catholic. I didn't have to choose at that time. Although some of my colleagues chose later to go to different other uh, 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 churches. But I am happy where I am. How has your faith influenced you in the practice of your profession as a gynecologist? Uh, uh, I attended a Catholic school. University in Dublin. There we did not take the Hippocratic Oath. We, I had to pass an examination in Catholic medical ethics, which was far deeper than the ordinary oath. You may or may not know that the original Hippocratic Oath, uh, in fact, did not even allow abortion. And it teaches you not to, to respect life and also to be loyal to your teachers for life. The Hippocratic Oath that is being taken now was modified after some meeting in Geneva. So the Catholic faith has been a way of life for me. Whatever I do, I do it knowing that this is the way to do. This is what I, I learned and this is my philosophy of life. Uh, Love God, love man. And once you do that, uh, you cannot go wrong. Jesus Christ himself said so. He said, as long as you do it to one of these, my little ones, you do it to me. Now, I told you, my mother died of painful death. So in my practice as an obstetrician gynecologist, when I see a patient, a lady, a woman, in the hospital, I see my mother. And so I give all that I have to helping that woman to overcome her problem. Um, it's also the reason why I was doing, I did most of my practice in the rural Ugoja, where I established a 64-bed hospital hoping that other women in that area would not suffer the same fate as my mother. In the environment where you come from, precisely Ogoja Ecomaxis, people believe that you are clairvoyant, you have special powers because there's always, uh, you always have a solution to most medical problems. Well, first of all, I do not have a solution to every medical problem. Uh, but to answer your question, I do not have any special powers. Medical practice is like a detective work. If you are a detective in crime, you must follow every lead uh, religiously in detail. Now, if you miss any one step, you may altogether miss, uh, say, for instance, who committed the murder. Now, in the same thing in medical practice, you are doing a detective work. I follow the simple a process of doing the right thing. 
And of course, specialization also helps because you know more about how to make a diagnosis. But the myth of my having extra power started in Ecom when I was a medical practitioner there during the Civil War, the latest, the last six months of the Civil War. I used to have patients from the Cameroons, for the whole, almost the whole of Cross River State, and those which were, were free to come. And most of the patients who could not be cured elsewhere came and got relief. So they began to think that I had extra powers. But I, as far as I know, I don't have any extra powers. Maybe God gives me special assistance. I don't know. Excellency, the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that life begins at conception. Uh, was that the reason why you didn't have a job? Because you did not believe in abortion when you were looking for a job as a young gynecologist? I became baptized as a young man and I was brought up in the Catholic faith. So I never really had time to think deep separately from saying, okay, this is my personal belief. I always thought as a Catholic. And so I, I never thought about it in the way to say, okay, I'm a Catholic, I, will, I mean, I'm not a Catholic, therefore I can do abortion. No, the Catholic faith teaches that life, the soul enters the body, the baby at conception. At the time, the sperm penetrates the, the egg. That was the view of uh, Thomas Aquinas, and it's generally accepted. There, there is at least one religion I know which believes that the soul enters the body, the, the baby, when the baby is 20 weeks old. At the time, the mother feels the baby kick. In other words, it's the entrance of the soul to the baby that makes the baby move. Until then, the baby did not move. Of course, you can see the fallacy of that kind of thing when you realize where we are now. Because uh, with the ultrasound machine we have now, the baby moves almost within the first six weeks of birth, of, of conception. On a final note, what is your advice to Catholic professionals who find themselves in a very challenging situation regarding their profession, the practice of their profession? Well, I think that uh, in all our lives, the fundamental rule is to do whatever you are doing according to your conscience. The conscience is the basic determinant for what you do. So I have no magic rule to advise anybody on how to practice medicine. It would be wrong for me to, <laughs> to, to teach anybody how to practice medicine. But what you do is you work according to your conscience. Let's obey your conscience and all will be well. Thank you, Your Excellency, for giving us this audience. The purpose of being here on earth is to love, know, and serve God. I have been speaking with His Excellency, Dr. Matthias Oko Ofoboche, a gynecologist, former Deputy Governor of Old Cross River State. I am Lavon Seletawa. Thank you for watching this segment. I hand you over to Omeka. You heard it all from the seasoned uh, gynecologist, a professional to the core and a great Catholic. And he has been able to explain to us how his belief in the Catholic Church has taken him to the level where he is now. We are now moving into the next segment of the program, which is what to do. I am Dr. Guru Chika Cynthia, and I'm here to talk to you on some basic health tips, some things you could do at home when your child develops fever in the middle of the night. Fever is simply a condition in which the body temperature is reset above the normal limit, which is between 36.6 to 37.2. When the body temperature is above 37.2, it's usually defined as fever. And when this occurs, appropriate measures should be taken so that the child doesn't lapse into convulsion. 
When your child develops fever in the middle of the night, there are three basic things that could be done at home before the child is brought to the hospital. First and foremost, you have to expose this child to the room temperature so that the room temperature will begin to cool the, body, the, the child's temperature. Secondly, you need to tepid sponge the child. Tepid sponging simply means use of tepid water. Water that is not too cold and water that is not too hot. There should be a blend of these two to give it a tepid water. And a clean cloth or towel is used to damp the child's body to reduce the temperature or to normalize the temperature. The last thing that could be done at home is administration of antipyretics. Antipyretics are basically drugs that are used to reduce the temperature or lower the body temperature when it's reset above the normal limit, which is above 37.2. So antipyretics, preferably that could be used as paracetamol and the appropriate dosage should be administered to the child. Once this is done, you need to monitor the, the child's body temperature that's why mothers are advised to have thermometers at home because you, you could monitor the child's temperature. But if there are no thermometers at home, you can monitor the child's temperature by merely touching the child's body with your hand and also comparing this temperature with your body temperature. And if the fever persists, it will be wise enough for you to bring this child to the hospital as quickly as possible. Thank you. It has been a wonderful time staying with you. I believe you had a swell time watching the program. If you did, please make it a date with us. Same time next week. I am Emeka Obieki asking you to remain blessed. Mm -hmm.